how to find the inverse of an equation. Two easy steps. If you have an equation, just switch x and y, and then isolate y. What we mean by that is get it so that you have y equals anything. Just get y on one side and everything else on the other side. For example, if you're asked to find the inverse of y equals 2x plus 5, switch x and y. So you have x equals 2y plus 5. See how we switch them? And then isolate y. y has this 2 on it and this plus 5 attached to it as well. We want to move both of those to the other side so that y is all that's left on the right there. The way that we deconstruct this side of the equation is to do the reverse of the order of operations. When you're evaluating this, you do 2 times y and then add 5. So the first thing you have to undo here is that plus 5. You have to move the 5 over before you do anything with the 2. Now to get rid of the 2, you divide both sides by 2, and what you're left with is y equals x minus 5 over 2. Now your teacher may prefer you to break that up and write it as 1 half x minus 5 over 2. See how we took the x, divided it by 2, took the negative 5 and divided it by 2. That's really, uh, it's going to depend on what your teacher wants. A question you're more likely to see is finding the inverse of a parabola. Now, I have written the same equation in two different ways here to point something out. When you're finding an inverse, it must be in vertex form, which is what's on top here. It cannot be in standard form like this one. You will have a lot of trouble if it's written like this, and it needs to be in vertex form. There are lots of ways to convert it from this form to vertex form. Take a look in unit one about how to find the vertex of an equation. Then you can plug the vertex right into vertex form. And this number out in front is the same number out in front here. Nonetheless, my point is, it can't be written like that. Got to be in vertex form. Because what we're going to do is switch x and y, and then we're going to isolate y. Switching x and y gives us x equals 2, y minus 3 squared plus 8. And as we deconstruct this side to isolate y, we bring our 8 over. We get x minus 8 here, and everything that's left on the right. We have to get rid of the 2 next. We divide both sides by 2. Now we have to get rid of the square. How do we undo square? By taking the square root of both sides. See, we got rid of the square on the right and took the square root of the left because the square root canceled out the square over here. One trick is you'll have to note that this is plus or minus the square root. The reason we have to include plus minus is because we know that y minus 3 squared is positive because when you square any number it becomes positive. But what we don't know is whether this y minus 3 in there started out positive or negative. You could square a positive number and get y minus 3 squared, but you could also square the negative number and also get y minus 3 squared back out. Long story short, when you undo a square, it's got to be plus or minus the square root. And then you can move the 3 over. The reason this minus 3 comes over last is because it was in the brackets. And what we're left with is that y equals plus or minus the square root of x minus 8 over 2 plus 3. Be careful that the, uh, the house or the square root symbol doesn't extend over the plus 3. You have to do the square root, then add 3. This, my friends, is the inverse of the original equation.